And welcome everyone. Welcome to our day of getting really super, super clear on guidance. Yeah. My prayer is that um, after the next couple hours, you're just going to have the biggest smile on your face because all of your questions around guidance will get answered in this one session. So you're not going to have to worry about this tomorrow or Monday morning or something. It's just going to, you're just going to have a big smile on your face that, that the ego can't wipe off of your face because, because it's coming from the, the joy in your heart. You just feel so happy. And all of the mysteries of time and space and the mysteries of this whole world just will vanish as we go into this topic. Because, you know, this is what you've come for. You've come to a, a online retreat titled Guidance, The Direct Path to God. Direct, right? We know what direct means. Direct means don't beat around the bush. Like, let's go right to the core of it. Let's get right to the heart of the matter. Let's get so deep into this that you get so happy and you just start to feel so joyful because you can accept the light right now. Right now, not in the future. And then as you accept the light, that, that will guide all of your seeming decisions and all the guidance that will come to you and through you, again, to take you into the present moment. This is not about making a better future. The whole belief in linear time, the ego invented time as a trick. Uh, as he tells us in Lesson 158, you know, time is a trick, a sleight of hand in which figures come and go as if by magic. And I think you're just like me. It's like, let's go the direct path to God. Like, like Patrice was saying, she was a little girl. She believed God is, God is real, that God is real, love is real. God is a loving God. And, and now Patrice is going for it now. She is not messing around with time and space. She's not messing around with social media. She is not messing around with anything. She doesn't even have to have a bunch of people in her life. She's got an 11-year-old nephew. Uh, Jesus is speaking through, and uh, that's better than a hundred close friends. One Jesus-loving nephew who says, oh, why do you think, thank me? Thank God. <laughs> 11 years old, he's, he's already got, got the core idea. Don't, don't thank me. Thank God. God is behind all of this. God is the, the answer you, to your prayer. God is your joy. God is your happiness. God is your love. And it's just like we're, we're ready to use today to let go of the mesmerism of time and space, the mesmerism of this illusory world, and really do it in a way where we really see the truth. Actually, I was on Facebook. I think Slava posted this um, Paramahansa Yogananda quote. And so I was just pondering before I came over today, I, oh, Paramahansa Yogananda. I just love him so dearly. He's just such a symbol. And I think he had many quotes because he and I have had many parallel experiences with time and space, except his was 50 years before me. <laughs> he was traveling around, talking about God all the time, pointing to God, gleeful, joyful, bold. And, uh, and we both came down here to Chapala, Lake Chapala, Mexico. We both enjoyed our time down here, but he was like 50 years ahead of me. So uh, we have all these experiences. The only thing is my haircut is a little different than his, but that's, that's minor. That's minor. So here's what Yogananda had, had to say, because I think this will help us in our, our, our guidance uh, thing today. Yogananda said, don't yearn for human love. It will vanish. Behind human love is the spiritual love of God. Seek that. Don't pray for home or for the money or for love or for friendship. Don't pray for anything of this world. Enjoy only what the Lord gives to you. All else leads to delusion. Man has 
come on earth solely to learn how to know God. He is here for no other reason. Thank you, Paramahansa. He's with us right now and he's smiling on us and he's saying, well, it's, it's great that we can go to the heart of guidance and we can get clear on what the guidance is for. But that quote starts us off in a beautiful way. Some of you know that Jesus uh, dictated A Course in Miracles to Helen Schuckman from 1965 to 1972. And then after that, there was some supplements because uh, Helen and Ken Wabnick were talking one day and Helen was talking about prayer and how Jesus helped her get some green pantyhose that she, <laughs> she wanted. And Jesus helped her get this used Borgana coat in New York City that she wanted for the price that she wanted to pay. Jesus filters through the mind that believes in the ego and brings things that are helpful to you while you believe in them. So, so the guidance is always very practical, but also we want to get to the purpose of the guidance. Like I said, how do I find the holy instant? How do I get to the present moment? Our friend Andy Page, that was beautiful. Andy's you know, questions and prayers, it's the top one. Hi, Living Miracles. My prayer is to let the Holy Spirit guide me step by step into the holy instant. Love, Andy. There you go. There you go. That's the purpose. To be guided into the holy instant. To be guided into the present moment. Isn't that what all the saints and mystics have talked about throughout the centuries? All the avatars, all the sages, all the wise men and wise women have all been saying, be present. And so have the poets. You know, so have the poets like Rumi and Kabir. So have the poets like Wordsworth and, and, you know, all the poets and mystics throughout all the centuries have been saying, love is real. Love is what you are. Love is in the present moment. Relax into the present moment. So that's the context for guidance. In fact, it's the Song of Prayer, which is one of these little adjunct uh, supplements that came with the Course in Miracles uh, in answer to, to uh, Ken Wapnick and Helen's prayer to know more about uh, prayer. Jesus gave the Song of Prayer, and in the Song of Prayer, Jesus has a line in which he says, the secret of true prayer is to forget the things you think you need. Because if you forget the things you think you need, you really give them over to God, to the Holy Spirit, and say, here, my mind has been preoccupied with these earthly human needs, needs that seem to be projected onto the body, or my basic environment, or my family, my partnership, my friendships, my relationships. I've projected all these needs, uh, kind of like that character in Bob and what about Bob? Some of you have seen that movie played by Bill Murray. I need, I need, I want, I want, I need, I need. You know, he plays out the he plays out the dependency and then he projects it onto his therapist, Richard Dreyfus, you know, who who has his own ego issues of being the unhealed healer. But everybody is praying to be released from this belief in time and space. So if we just give a little context to this, we could say that in heaven, all is one, nirvana, all is one, and then the belief in separation brings this feeling of unworthiness or lack. Something's missing. Something's not right. I, where is the love you said was mine, all mine, till the end of time? Was it just a lie? Where is the love? I'm going to tell you where the love is. You know it already. It's inside you. It's not in the images. Like Parmahansa was helping us out with, don't search for human love. Don't search for friendships. Don't search for likes on your posts on Facebook. Don't look outside yourself to the things of time and space and say, where is the love? Because as long as you look in the darkened glass, that it's talked about in Corinthians in the Bible. As long as you look in time and space for love, for meaning, for understanding, for purpose, it's not there. Uh, as I say on the Spanish retreats, nada, 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 nada. 
you have to realize, nada, don't, don't look there in that darkened glass, because the ego made the world as a distracted device. The ego made the world as a veil. Why would you look for divine love, who you are, in a distracted device? Why would you look inside a veil to find the truth? The truth cannot be found in form. And Jesus tells us that in the Beyond All Idols sections in the Course, he says, truth is universal. Your will is universal and cannot be found in form of any kind. You cannot be content with form of any kind. It's like the ego has said, come here, look in my darkened glass, you know. Come here, my pretty. You believe you've separated from God. Oh, too bad, too bad. Now God will punish you, uh, the ego says. So you might as well come over and look into my crystal ball. Look into my crystal ball over here. Look deep inside my crystal ball because you've lost your happiness and joy and love. You, 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 you left God, so now you've got to make the best of it. Come and look into my crystal ball over here. What are you missing? Love? Oh, don't. You lost it. You can't go back to God. He's, he'll be angry with you. Come over, look into my crystal ball of time and space I, that I have invented for you. I have invented a world for you of time and space where you can find intimacy and happiness and joy and peace and love. You can find friendship, companionship. You can find success. You can have status. You can have money. Oh, look, you can possess things in my crystal ball. You can never have possessions with God. God is, you know, you've left that. You, but over here, you can possess things. And, uh, and it's got some tricks in here. It's a competition, but work hard. Work hard over here in my crystal ball because you can make it to the end of the rainbow and that's somewhere off in this future because the ego invented the future and the ego invented the past. And the ego says, just keep playing the game over here in this crystal ball and keep your mind focused on that. And then you go into the crystal ball with your mind and you, you try to enter this game of time and space and you try to find happiness there. But what did I say yesterday? I said, a son of God is only happy in the environment in which he was created. When I'm talking Son of God, I'm talking the Christ, the pure Christ idea of unconditional love that's a pure creation of God. And, and the Christ can only be happy in God, God's love, in heaven, in the mind of God. The Christ cannot forget that, that it's the Christ and then be a, a dreamer of a dream and find happiness in the dream world, in the crystal ball of the dream world. If you are created as an eternal being, what makes you think that you can actually find happiness in this crystal ball of time and space that the ego invented? And in fact, we just watched the movie Tron uh, at our last Spanish English uh, weekend retreat. And I was talking about Tron where Kevin Flynn, you know, invents a digital world, then he gets trapped in the digital world and He's trying to do his Zen thing. Some of you I know are trying to meditate your way out of this dream, out of the crystal ball. It seems to take a long time. You know, you do a, you're putting in a lot of hours <laughs> there with your Zen thing inside the crystal ball. And Jesus is saying, well, that's good. I'm glad you're, you're meditating. That's good. And, and you can contemplate. That's good too. You can, you can believe you're battling the ego and fighting against sin. All these ways will eventually reach God, but I'm going to give you a fast track to do it, to, to release your mind from the mesmerism, the hypnotism of this crystal ball of time and space. The fast track, I'm going to give it to you straight. I, I'll use even, I've used the parable of Jesus 2,000 years ago, but let me even use the parable of David because that's a little more seemingly recent in time that um, the parable of David, the last 34 years have involved this thing called A Course in Miracles, not the first uh, years of David's life in the parable of David, but the last 34 years have involved A Course in Miracles. And actually, 
the book is just a symbol, just like David's just a symbol in all the parables of the world. So there's nothing special about the parable, but the parable has been a parable of learning to follow guidance, the direct path to God. That's the name of, of our online retreat. And what it has been is now I can condense the wisdom of those last 34 years, for example, because it's really, I see that when you're all showing up here and you're praying, you want direct guidance. You want to take that direct path. So I can condense the wisdom that I've experienced through seemingly these last 34 years of, of praying, of listening and following and, and tuning into this guidance, these instructions. And there have been a lot of instructions that seem to come, but again, it's not about 34 years of instructions, it's about what is the purpose of the instructions, but to free your mind from the crystal ball. Because the mind is actually a part of the mind of God, it's a creation of God, but when you believe in the ego, the mind splits into two parts, the Holy Spirit who remembers the truth and the ego, that is the lie. And the key point is that the all purpose of all guidance, the purpose of all prayer, the purpose of following the, the guidance, the purpose of it all is to come to the present moment. You already are what you're searching for. You're already there. You already are there. And you may say, well, I don't believe it. Well, that's the point of the prayer to activate the guidance so that you can remember the truth of who you are. And the parables seem to involve, you know, coming across A Course in Miracles in 1986 and then praying and, and asking, reading the book, following the guidance, opening up after maybe two and a half, three years, then I, I could hear the voice of Jesus speaking to me and that really speeded things up as well because, because I believed in the crystal ball. I believed in time and space, and I believed that there had to be a better way, like Helen and Bill had prayed. I really believed there had to be a, a better way. But, you know, when you're in your, at the time, maybe late, late 20s, you know, you're, you've got things in your mind. What about the future? What about my career? What about my ambitions? What about the life that I am going to lead in time and space, very much all tied into the crystal ball. And Jesus is, remember, saying he wants to call your mind back to, toward the light. He doesn't want you to be stuck, mesmerized by this pseudo fake, invented, make-believe crystal ball of a world. He wants you to, to release your investment in the ego and the crystal ball that the ego made up. So that's the key. That's the key bit of wisdom right there is that all of this listen and follow that David seemed to go through, it seemed like David was receiving the guidance. It seemed like David was the one who was making those decisions uh, to like leave behind his career, give his life over to Jesus, leave behind his ambitions for the future and basically say, here's my heart, here's my life, Here's my bank account. <laughs> Here's my decision-making capacity and saying, it seemed like David was back in 1986 saying, please help me, <laughs> please help me. But dream figures don't wake up. And this parable has never been about David. This is about remembering the mind that we share. We all share the same mind and everything is solved in that mind by the Holy Spirit. In fact, it's, it doesn't say everything will be solved in the future by that mind and the Holy Spirit. It's saying everything has already been solved. So this little gap that we have believed in in our mind called the ego, which says, oh, you're lacking, you've left God, now, you're, now you have to struggle and suffer and get sick and die. That little teeny puff of nothingness is a tiny little gap in our mind and it's already been solved. It's already been solved. The Holy Spirit has already answered this belief in separation. So really, following the guidance is just a way, a mechanism of remembering that everything has already been solved. 
that the, the belief in separation from God, which is just a belief, it's not a reality, it's not an actuality, it's already been solved, and now I, I need to accept the correction. I need to accept that it's already solved. That Jesus already solved this riddle uh, 2,000 years ago, seemingly in time, but, but actually it was in the mind. He accepted the correction, and now he's working directly with the mind that believes in this puff of nothingness to say, let it go. Cough it up, spit it out. <laughs> don't, don't let this thing get caught in your throat, you know, so to speak. It, don't hold on to the belief in your mind. So the ego is a master at, at making up a crystal ball of a world in which there are many perceived problems. There's, there's not only a body and bodies, but there's all these problems. There's financial problems, there's health issues, there's there's issues about um, interpersonal relationships. There's all these pseudo problems that all of them exist in this crystal ball of time and space. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit are like going, turn your mind to, to us, turn away from that crystal ball, turn to the light. In the light, you, that's who you are. You don't really have any problems because None of the crystal ball problems that you believe in are real. So you're hallucinating, but you think it's real. You've gone to a movie theater and now you've, you've got hooked on the movie. And now you're reacting and responding to all the characters and the images that are part of the movie. And now you believe you're in the movie. You believe you're a character inside the movie. Problems that the ego set up, which are all these projected crystal ball problems, are are problems that are made with one reason, and that's to, so you won't turn to the light, that you won't go within and go to the light. The whole crystal ball is a, is a distracted device to keep you from turning to the light. The whole crystal ball was designed by the ego to avoid be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am, I am the Christ, I am one with God. So these pseudo problems are set up and and you know, the ego really likes this game because let's say you have like two or three or 10 major problems that you're dealing with uh, and you, you pray and you try to follow guidance and you're trying to solve the problems inside the crystal ball. I have a financial problem, oh, I got a check in the mail or a friend loaned me some money or I, I won the lottery, or da 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 da. Inside the crystal ball, the ego says, Oh, very good, you solved that one. Now here's 10 more. And then you solve those 10, and then what do you get? 20 more. You, the ego loves the game of problems and solution inside the crystal ball because every time you seem to have personally solved some of them, it sends in the next set. And you can see why it gets kind of depressing inside the crystal ball, because the problems don't ever go away. And Jesus is telling us, that's what I learned from the Course in these last 34 years. I really learned it from Jesus in my mind, but seemingly the Course was a symbol that helped, was he's saying, your problems have already been solved. Come in with me, come into your mind to me, to the presence of love, Let's see the happy dream together. Let's see the forgiven world together. Let's see the crystal ball from a point outside of the crystal ball. The ego just invented this thing to keep you distracted. And if you just see it for what it is, you'll see that you have no problems. It's just inside the crystal ball of time and space, the problems seem to be real. Therefore, Jesus says, the secret of true prayer is to forget the things you think you need. He's basically just saying, don't look inside of time and space for the solutions. He says it a hundred different ways. Seek not outside yourself or it will fail and you will weep each time an idol falls. He's telling us, go within. He said that 2,000 years ago, take no thought for what you shall wear or what you shall eat. You see, that's inside the crystal ball. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. He's saying, come out, come back to your heart, 
come back to the joy. You'll never find consistent joy, happiness, peace inside this crystal ball of time and space. You know, it reminds me of that song about Vincent van Gogh, because Vincent van Gogh would paint these amazing colors and these amazing paintings. And yet he was very, he was struggling as far as identity, you know, he's suicidal, he, I think he cut off part of his ear, spectacular paintings, and he's just wanting to go home. He's wanting outside of the crystal ball. And then Jesus now is giving us the answer. He's saying, good, that's good. No matter how in, ingenious or creative or, or whatever you seem to do inside the crystal ball, that will never content you. So guidance, I could say, is not about solving problems in time and space. Now, I know a lot of you, a lot of the questions that you write in and a lot of your prayers are about, here's my situation, David, in the crystal ball. <laughs> it's you're like, oh, I see you, David, you're in the crystal ball too. And I'm, I'm asking you now, can you help me with my crystal ball problems? And I'm saying, well, it can seem like the guidance will come through and I will definitely uh, address your specific concerns because this is what you believe in and I'm going to address those very specifically and then Francis will join me tomorrow and we will continue doing that. So we don't, we're not kind of like just saying, okay, just close your eyes and pray with me. All is love, all is God, all is love, all is God. That's the truth, but I'm trying to reach your mind in a way that you can actually hear what I'm saying, that it's all mind. Everything is mind. There are no problems apart from the mind. That's lesson 132 uh, from A Course in Miracles. There, there are no problems apart from the mind, apart from what you think, and apart from what you believe. There, it's not in the crystal ball it's of the world that you're going to find the problems or the solutions. Because the world was made that you would never find the solution, that you would never find the Holy Spirit in the mind. The world was made just with more problems. You solve a few, you get another set. You solve them, you get another set. You solve them, you get another set. You see how it's a wild goose chase to follow those problems out. So. What I'd like to share is that once you begin to see that the problem is not inside the world, then you start to focus on your thoughts and your beliefs. So really we could say that, that to believe in the ego and that to believe in the ego's thoughts and thought system is a thinking problem. So you could, you could do that every time you seem to have a problem with, with Finance is a problem with the body or symptoms on the body or uh, therapies and treatments for the body or food issues or any kind of issue, issues with politicians, with the environment, issues with uh, your interactions with your fellow humans, you know, your brothers and sisters. Anytime you start to, to think about those problems, if you believe those problems are those specific things that I've just mentioned, and many more, then that's a thinking problem. You're thinking with the ego, and you're buying into the crystal ball, and now you're thinking the problems are inside time and space, and now you're trying to solve them. And therefore, you might have even signed up for this retreat thinking, David's going to help me solve all of my specific problems. And in one sense, it's true, but I have to show you that they're in the mind. They're not in the world. Because if you continue to think that the problems are in, in time and space, you're going to actually continue to think that the guidance and the answers to those specific problem is inside of time and space. And that's not the point of the guidance. The guidance is saying, come to the holy instant, come, come beyond that whole trick of time and space. Come beyond distractionville. Come beyond this, this mesmerizing trick of past and future, and you come into the present moment where you have always been, which is the gateway to eternity, which is what you are. You're an eternal being. And you are not bound by 
time and space. You can start to realize, oh my gosh, I was just thinking that these were real problems because I was thinking that this world was real. That was my assumption. The world's real and now I've got to solve the problems inside of time and space. It is never going to happen. There is no solution. There, they've, this crystal ball is actually external to you. You're this light in the mind and this ball is external to you, but now you believe you're in it. Because of your thoughts and beliefs, you think you're inside of it. And now you're like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz who wants to go home to the light, not just Kansas. <laughs> you want to go home to your eternal nature as the Christ. That's in, in the mind of God. That's what going home is all about. And yet, you seem to go on an adventure, and David seemed to go on this adventure where, oh, look in the crystal ball, David. Oh, look, he's got a course of miracles. Oh, look at that. Now he's, he doesn't like to travel, but Jesus has got him traveling everywhere. Ha <laughs> ha, all over the United States, Canada. Oh, now he's got him, Argentina. Oh my God, he's going to 44 countries and he doesn't even like to travel. Wow, Jesus is, must be doing something in his mind because that character doesn't like to speak. That character was voted most quiet in the whole senior class, voted most quiet in the crystal ball. My goodness, now Jesus has got him talking. Oh, he's going to course groups. Oh, he's talking, now he's speaking. Oh my God, Jesus is speaking through him now. Look at that. Oh, now he's traveling and speaking. Oh my gosh, you see, the, the Holy Spirit in Jesus will use the skills and abilities in the crystal ball that the ego made up to take you to the present moment. That's the only point. It's not about the future. This is not about a future career. You know, maybe those are some of your aspirations. Oh, I want to leave my life, earth life as I am now, but I'm going to have a goal. I want to go and live in a living miracles community. I want to go and live in Quantico where everything is peaceful all the time, where they just, they do a show every once in a while, but meanwhile they just sit there with ISO and Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. You know, maybe you think that they're just doing Om Shanti Shanti here in Quantico with ISO. ISO I think probably is doing that a bit on inside. He's laughing, he's doing He's our cat that has went into a samadhi experience and left the body and was, was just there like a glazed cat with glazed eyes because he had left the, he literally transcended the body and, and we, we saw him, you know, with his eyes looking out into space and it looked like he was dead, but he was actually just uh, communing, <laughs> communing with, with the source, you know. So now we have samadhi cat that we call ISO and the ISO, if you remember the movie, the ISOs are the ones that just started appearing. They weren't invented. they just these sparkly light beings. If you ever watch the movie Tron, the sparkly light beings just show up and no one knows where they came from. They're just these beings of light. Bio-digital jazz, man. That's what the inventor calls them. Bio-digital jazz, man. Did you invent them? <laughs> no, of course not. So you, you can experience these miraculous experiences like Svava was singing about. You know, show me how to believe in miracles. That really, that's just saying, show me that the crystal ball isn't who I am. Some of you, and I will deal with all these things. I know um, I was watching Jiska. Uh, you're just enjoying watching this all here. And you're over in the Netherlands and you're sitting there and you're with your butterfly wings and your beautiful hammock and, and smiling and laughing and everything. And meanwhile, on the other side of the planet, there's Helena, uh, who's Elias, who's also uh, joining in with us too. And she's there smiling and she's like, oh, there, and, and there's Jiska, oh my, I was just WhatsApping Netta in the Netherlands uh, recently. And, and now, oh, there's Jiska, she's sitting there. Whoa, what? What's going on with Helena and Jiska is both of them are be feeling called by God into this deep journey into oneness. And Jiska has children. And uh, Helena has children. And, and the mind of Jiska is thinking, yeah, I'd really love to wake up to God and, and, and 
follow my heart and go for it and everything, but, but I have these children. Uh, and I know that if there's going to be a plan for waking up, I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, because with children, I have a lot of beliefs in the crystal ball, in the mind that I'm a mother, that children need their mother, and so on and so on and so forth. And Helena is over there too. You two are like counselors for each other. You two need each other more now than you ever did because most of the people on the screen you're looking at you're thinking they're not going through the same thing. They're not. They're 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 being called by God, but they they don't have children uh, that they're responsible for. And and Jiska has written in a beautiful long prayer where she's like, "Please, Holy Spirit, you know, I want to come home to you, but I don't know. You're going to have to guide me because I don't know how I'm going to unwind from this self concept that I made up." You're saying to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, some of these other ones that, that are in community and they're, you know, they're following their guides and everything, good for them. Yeah, good for them. They don't have children. You know, like my, you're saying, my degree of difficulty <laughs> is much greater than these other ones. Oh, yeah, they're in Quantico and meditating and translating, having fun. And I watch them and they're having so much fun. And I've got children and they don't. And so you know, they're closer because the degree of difficulty, you know, is like if I'm a gymnast, now I'm trying to do a triple backflip axle uh, and come down on my feet and land in heaven. And these other ones, you know, they're just like raising their arms and legs, you know, and they're just, they're, they're not, they don't have to do like a triple reverse axle. But, but you believe that your pathway to God is higher in degree of difficulty. And this, and Helena Elias, you know, it's the same thing. It's, it's like, it's like, wow, I've got to really perform some kind of, of uh, maneuver here with the Holy Spirit's help to get me out of what I perceive I am. And remember, the first principle of A Course in Miracles is there's no order of difficulty in miracles. One miracle is not harder than another. And you are beginning to feel this, like, wow, I'm called by God, and it can't be that the circumstances that, that the ego invented have put me in a more difficult trap than other people. It can't be that way. Why? It's because the crystal ball is just the crystal ball, and you have to see it for what it is, no matter what you believe. Construction worker, father, mother, sister, brother, Whatever you believe you are in time and space is really irrelevant to the Holy Spirit and to Jesus. Because, because they're representing God, and God is saying, you are a perfect child of God, and you are only going to be happy in your environment, which is heaven. Like, this is a wake-up call, and regardless of how you perceive yourself in that crystal ball, I am calling you out of the world. There is no harder or more difficult circumstances to realize who you are because, because God didn't generate or create any of those circumstances. And God loves you so dearly that if you even came close to this light, you would just weep in gratitude and say, oh my God, I can't believe I thought those thoughts about me. And I can't believe that I was this, whatever that was. I don't even know what that, that crystal ball is anymore. You would... You would just cry and weep as you got closer to that light. You would just, you could not control your emotions. The love in your heart would just swell and swell to a giant proportions. And you would think, and, and I was concerned about the crystal ball. I was concerned about the characters, that they were going to scream at me, point the finger at me, you can't do it, you're abandoning, you're rejecting, and da da da. And Jesus is like, well, yeah, that's what made the crystal ball, the belief in ego, the belief in abandonment, rejection, false responsibilities. Who generated all these except the, the ego? The, your one responsibility is to accept the correction. The ego doesn't care which angle it gets you. It's always saying, you can't leave this crystal ball because it's saying it's your home now. You live, the ego says, you live in the crystal ball, and if you go, you're going to be so sorry 
you're going to be so sad if you leave this crystal ball. You know, don't believe this crazy small still voice is telling you about heaven. You know, you know, a bird in the hand is worth what is, how many in the bush? You know, there's all these sayings like go with what's right in front of you. But the world of time and space seems to be what's right in front of you. And now it seems to be a threat to let go of these earthly time-space problems and, and accept the correction in the mind. And you may think, well, I, I, I'm a human being, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human problem solver, and I'm, I really tuned in to this retreat this weekend because I'm hoping David can give me better access to the Holy Spirit so he can solve, help me solve my human problems. Um, and then if, if I can do that, then I'll be good. And the ego will throw in another set of human problems tomorrow, and then another set of human problems the next day, and it will keep throwing in more and more stacks of problems. And it will keep telling you, you can't be a perfect child of God because you've got too many problems. <laughs> you've, and it's all within the crystal ball of time and space where it generates all these false problems of yesterday and problems of tomorrow and if you keep believing in those problems, then you, you won't go back to the light. You'll say, I don't deserve to be in the light. I'm not a good enough problem solver. I don't know how to pray well enough. I don't receive enough guidance. And I've, because I don't receive the guidance, I've got too many time-space problems to go back to heaven. And what Jesus is telling us is he's saying, no, 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 don't look to that darkened glass. Don't, don't keep thinking these thoughts and believing these beliefs. In fact, just today, Lynn Robin Miller from the United States, um, she shared a poem with us. And, and when I read this poem this morning, when I just sat down here and it was right on top for me, Lynn, Lynn Robin Miller of the United States, she wrote this poem called Over the Abyss. And I think this poem is for all of us, so I'm going to read it. Because this abyss is the crystal ball of time and space. And this is the poem that she, she gave to us. I walked to the edge of the abyss. Ego bid me look down. See? It's like, look in my crystal ball. See? A vast, vast nothingness stretching out to eternity. Ego said, this is what you'll encounter if you take one more step, like a step into the abyss. If you take one more step, this is what you'll encounter. If you take one more step, the end of the world as you've known it, of your separate identity, the complete disillusion of all you've come to be. My breath quickened as terror struck like a blade, and I trembled as I contemplated the end of what I thought of as me. Ego screamed, it's time to step back, don't fall. But in my right ear, I did hear a call and that sounded like music of a grand symphony. And I floated over the abyss on its holy melody. What a beautiful poem for us. The ego is saying, if you listen to that small, still voice, to that music, to that symphony of love that's playing in your mind, God's love, Jesus' love, the Holy Spirit's love, the love that's the light in your mind, if you listen to that, the ego is saying, you're going to fall off and drop and lose everything that you've ever held dear to be the me. You'll have to let go of the me that was invented in order to soar and float on its holy melody. <laughs>